If you are a woman balancing career, life, family, all the things, then you know how difficult it is to prioritize self-care. It usually ends up at the bottom of your to-do list. If you're a woman with ADHD, this is so important that you prioritize yourself. And today I'm going to share why you need to prioritize yourself, how dangerous it can be if you don't, how beneficial it can be if you can, and also how to set your routine up for you and not forget to do the things. My name is Garen McGill. I'm an ADHD coach and I'm also an expert in wellness. So I have been training women in fitness and nutrition for over 10 years. So I've earned my chops in this one mostly because I've gone through an entire cycle of burnout. So I know how horrible it can be if you stop taking care of yourself and how important it is that you do that. So today I'm going to share a list of self-care activities in order of priority. This is not intended for you to do all of them. It is intended to be an exercise and inspiration where hopefully you can pick up a few things that you may not be doing right now, but that you think you can do quite easily and start adopting them. So I'm going to have this printed on my website as well in, form, in the form of a checklist. But once again, it's not to be doing all the things, it's to be doing the things that you think you need most. So the first one is obviously going to be sleep. This is so important to prioritize getting at least seven to eight hours sleep a night. Here's why. There was research done recently where a neurotypical person was sleep deprived for two days and they presented as though they had ADHD symptoms. So think about that. If you have ADHD, you're even going to be more impacted by a lack of sleep. It is so critical, not only because sleep regulates mood, thoughts, memory processing, but it also helps with um, making better decisions throughout the day, particularly around eating and working out and the things that are vital to our wellness. So if you're not prioritizing sleep right now, definitely start there. I highly encourage you to be getting enough rest that your brain can function as its beautiful self. Number two is definitely get your body moving at least 30 minutes a day. So here's some interesting research. If you are exercising for about 20 to 30 minutes of a moderate to intense exercise, you can expect to get up to two to three hours of focused attention afterwards. That's because when you work out, you're increasing blood flow to the brain. And it's also great for mood and just general emotional regulation. So get yourself moving and make sure that you're taking care of your body in this way so that you can move today and when you're rocking it in your 90s because movement is critical to uh, thriving with an ADHD brain. So always be making sure that your movement is sustainable, something that you can do now, something you can do in the future because it is so important. Number three is hydration. Maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't, but when you have a lot of brain fog, sometimes it's very often because your brain doesn't have enough hydration. So when we aren't hydrated enough, we can lose concentration and also feel very hungry as well and get distracted easier. The next thing is to start your day with a protein rich meal. So notice I didn't say breakfast because some of us like to intermittent fast and that's just fine. But your first meal should be protein focused and also with some fat. Not only will this set you up for a better eating day throughout the whole day, but if you avoid sugars and simple carbs, then you avoid that cycle of um, spike and crashing of insulin, which will continue to cycle throughout the day. Starting with a protein rich meal might look like eggs or unsweetened uh, Greek yogurt or protein smoothie. But however, if you are doing a protein smoothie, try to avoid using fruit juices and bananas because they have a lot of sugar in them. Berries are okay though. The next tip is obviously take your meds and put them somewhere that you will not forget them because ADHD. The next recommendation I have is making a goal of walking 10,000 steps a day. Now you can do that in the form of running if you're a runner and probably accomplish it pretty quickly. But if you're not a runner, then you can definitely just be walking around the house, going for a walk outside in nature, or just moving and cleaning and running after your kiddos. I use a Fitbit and I find that that helps me track my steps really easily throughout the day. And I always sort of gamify it. So I have a friend who also tracks her steps and we always share our, um, our steps 
habits at the end of the day and also our sleep scores. And it helps to keep us motivated and connected to that goal. And by the way, walking is so important, not just for your physical health, but for your mental health. Uh, research has recently come out saying that people that walk for at least three days a week, 30 minutes at a time, have a much lower chance of uh, developing Alzheimer's. So hey, that's another great reason to take your brain for a walk. The next thing I recommend doing is future self journaling. So if you are somebody who journals, this is gonna be a fun process for you. If you're not somebody who journals, maybe this is something you pick up. And if you don't like writing, you could always do voice journaling with a voice recorder app. But essentially what uh, future self journaling is, it's an intentional way of writing a narrative and crafting your future self word by word. So you are exploring ways that you are going to create that person and also nurture them. Like where, where are they in five years and what does their financial situation look like? What does their health situation look like? If you want some prompts for future self journaling, head to my website, it's adhdfriendly.com. I have a list of free tools there. I will link them below, but future self journaling is a fun thing to do and it is really productive in terms of just moving yourself towards your future vision of yourself. The next thing I recommend for all folks with ADHD is doing yoga. So yoga is a practice that brings you into your body. A lot of us live in our heads. So we have, we tend to forget that there's even anything from the neck down. Yoga brings you back into your body. It's grounding. It's great for your nervous system. And the balancing work that you do in yoga is also really good for the brain. It's just generally very calming. And when I say practice yoga, I don't mean going to a studio every day for a 90 minute session. There's no way I could do that. I do practice yoga in my house. I roll on a mat in my living room and most of my practice is like 20 to 30 minutes at a time. But I find teachers that I like either through YouTube or uh, I also like Allo Moves. I'll link to that below. They've got great yoga classes, fantastic teachers. If you've tried one and you didn't like it, try a different style, try a different instructor and you will find the right yoga for you and you will not regret it. Yoga has changed my life in so many ways. My next recommendation for self-care habits is to get ready for the day. Now, I don't do this every day, but I'm really trying to get better at it. And I'm not suggesting that you put on a three-piece suit if you're not leaving the house, but you know, do your hair, put your makeup on, and it will make you feel so much better. I always do that on days where I'm filming, and those are the days that I feel the best, and I'm typically most productive as well. So I'm dressed the way I want to be. This is me talking about self-care in my yoga clothes, and they make me feel very comfortable, but I also feel put together. So whatever that means to you, put a little effort into every morning to make yourself present as your best self and you will definitely feel it as much as you look it. The next suggestion is something that I have been working on all this year and is actually my word for the year and it is creating boundary. I have boundaries that keep me focused and then I also have boundaries that keep me feeling safe and just myself in my relationships, interactions with other people. I have boundaries for work, boundaries for home. And I find that as I'm developing these, I'm becoming much more myself. And the more I become myself, the more I give the permission to the people around me to do the same. So boundaries are really one of the best things that you could do for yourself and the people that you love. And the last thing that is very ADHD focused and very ADHD friendly is to find your tribe. I have always kind of felt like the odd duck in the majority of my interactions with people. I didn't realize it was because of ADHD, but getting diagnosed last year and finding my community has been life changing. You start to realize that you're not alone out there and that there's other folks that think the same way you do and there's nothing wrong with us. We're actually pretty awesome, but we need to find our people. So find yourself an ADHD community. I have several and they have been life changing. This also goes for coaching, both uh, getting a coach for myself, but then I also went through a coach training. So having an ADHD specific coach can be really helpful in terms of helping you figure out an operating system for yourself that's going to help you thrive because your brain is neurodiverse and we live in a neurotypical world so it takes a little bit of extra time thought and 
imagination to create a world that's really going to allow us to thrive in it. And a coach can help you do that, particularly an ADHD coach. So those are my self-care tips. I know there was a lot. I hope it's not too overwhelming. And I hope you realize that this was just intended to inspire you to maybe pick up a few things. Don't try to do all of it because ugh, that just never works out well. But I will say, since picking up these habits in 2017, not only did they help me heal from burnout, they helped me thrive. Like I am the person today because of all these habits. So I do it not because I need like gold stars, but I find that if I do these habits more and more, I want to do them more and more. But if I get out of the habit of them and I do them less and less, I start to feel crappier and my bad habits start to creep up and I don't want that for me and I don't want it for you either. So find the habits that work for you. Maybe they're completely different, but if you have some that have really helped you, I would love to hear them. So please drop them in the comments below. And again, if you'd rather listen to these ideas than watch them on YouTube, although I do love that you're here, uh, please feel free to search for my, uh, my podcast. It's called the ADHD friendly show where I talk about the same ideas that I do, uh, here on YouTube. And I also share them in the Sunday setup, which is a weekly email that goes out to all my ADHD folks and to set them up for the week ahead with ideas, inspiration, and tools for living your best ADHD life. So thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to share more ADHD friendly topics with you in the future. So hit subscribe and I'll see you next week.